From the Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas, this is an ITTV special report. Our next guest is from a company that provides tools for life science and are raising awareness about our DNA. Graham Scott is the Director of Market Development and Sequencing for Life Technologies. Graham, welcome into you tomorrow. Thank you. Pleasure to have you with us. And uh, Graham brought along with him Retta Berry. Retta is a mom whose kids uh, were affected very positively by getting some work done through life sciences and that sort of thing, correct? Yes, they were, yes. Welcome into tomorrow as Thank well. Thank you. Thank you. It's nice to be here. Uh, first of all, tell me about this whole raising awareness of our DNA. We hear a lot about DNA, usually involving crime scenes and that sort of thing, and it's the former cop in me that, that typically uh, says, oh, DNA, solving crimes. There's a whole lot more to that, though, and when we get into life sciences, how doctors are able to use DNA to help solve other problems as well. That's right, Dave. Yeah, so increasingly medical researchers are, um, are turning to, to DNA sequencing, and, and it's be very much becoming now a workhorse technique where researchers that are looking at cancer and, and major diseases are exploring the biology of those diseases and really trying to understand at a fundamental molecular level what's going on. And, and so we're seeing this, this tremendous growth, this tremendous interest from medical researchers. Um, we're seeing a lot of uptake in terms of the technology. Um, and we're seeing from a technology perspective now, I don't, get, don't want to get too deep into it, but we're introducing semiconductor sequencing uh, at Life Technologies. And this is, this is where you can actually um, sequence DNA on a semiconductor chip um, in a matter of hours. And really, because that's the other thing we usually hear about DNA is that the results will take weeks and uh, or months or longer. But now, a matter of hours, they can that's do right. the same sort of thing. That's right. That has taken a really long time. That's right, Dave. And, and as you know, wow. in, and as you know, industries where semiconductors um, have have become part of those industries, it's really transformed them. And so we're going to see this in, in, the, in the sequencing space as well. Wow, terrific. Well, that certainly is some uh, good leaps and, uh, and jumps for technology making a difference. Retta, I understand uh, your child or two children, I think, uh, one was misdiagnosed or something. Tell me how, how you got involved with uh, the DNA story in life sciences. So my husband and I have twins who are 15 years old, and they were diagnosed with cerebral palsy when they were close to two years old. Hmm. And um, we discovered that they had been misdiagnosed. We had their whole genome sequenced back in 2009, and we were able to find the exact genetic mutation that was responsible for their neurologic disorder. Wow. So what that gave us was an opportunity to give them a correct uh, medication that has literally changed their lives. I believe it saved our daughter's life. So up until about five and a half years of age, um, Alexis was... Um, unable to walk most of the day. She couldn't sit up or chew or swallow by 10.30 in the morning. We added um, an amino acid at that point that gave them the ability to function. And then in 2009, she developed some other issues and, and we couldn't get answers from the medical community. So DNA sequencing literally saved their lives. And what's involved in the DNA sequencing then so that others listening can say, okay, maybe that's something I should look at for my child or myself or, or whatever the case. What's involved there? For them, it, it, for anyone, it's a blood draw. They, they okay. draw their blood. Very simple. And then w the process is much more complicated yeah, than that. But from a patient... Um, standpoint, it's it's a blood draw, and then the technology, as uh, Graham was talking about, has has advanced so rapidly and become much more um, fast and uh, yeah. very accurate. In the case of the Berry twins, they actually were working with a very prestigious group at Baylor College of Medicine um, under the leadership of Dr. Richard Gibbs, and um, as Rita mentions, a blood draw occurred from the twins and also some of the other family members, I believe, yes. and. Dr. Gibbs, in a few weeks, was able to perform the sequencing and yes. analyze the data, and then you were um, asked to come back to Baylor, I believe, and, and, and he explained the results of that sequencing to you. Absolutely. W was the doctor then telling you that it, it's a different disease and, in fact, not cerebral palsy that they had diagnosed years earlier? Or that, in other words, how did he deliver that information to you and say, it's not what we think, and, in fact, it's this, and here's how we're going to deal with it? So they were able to identify that it was um, a different, it was not cerebral palsy, but it was actually a neurologic disorder um, 
called dopa responsive dystonia and and it was even a little bit more informative than that uh, describing the specific form of dopa responsive dystonia but the good thing is whatever it was you had now had hope that there was going to be something that would make a big difference in their lives absolutely yes wow. that's terrific and then from from your standpoint graham and, and life science of uh, life technologies do you guys work with the medical uh, profession now? You're, you would work, for example, with, with Retta's doctors to say, well, here's what we found, and now you do your diagnosis, but we've ascertained the following. We, we do. We work very closely with a lot of medical researchers. So, again, um, at, at this stage, the technologies are for research, but we work across the globe with, with a large number of um, research institutions, again, including Baylor, um, and, and we do this kind of thing a lot and, and increasingly we're, we're putting a lot of energy into that Dave. Should we all get our DNA sequenced? Is it something that would be helpful to most of us in some way? You know I, I think that I think that in the foreseeable future a large number of us will have some sequencing done I think I think I see that coming in the next don't, want, don't know that I want to put an exact time sure. frame on it but, but the next few years let's say. But certainly sometime if you will into tomorrow. Yes, that's absolutely. the name of our show, so we've yeah. got to sneak that in. But yeah. it, that's kind of where you were headed. Is like yep. is, there's no definitive time, but it certainly can help doctors in general, even if it's just a matter of saying, yeah, everything shows healthy on, a, on an exam, including your DNA sequencing. Yeah. Yes. You, you know, I know we're out of time, but, but 10 years ago, one genome was sequenced. Now there are thousands of genomes that have been sequenced. So we're at this start of this very exciting time period where, yes, sure. people will increasingly be sequenced. Well, thank you both for joining us, and, and, and good news for you, and thank you for sharing your story with thank us, too. That, that shows how technology can, in fact, make a difference in our lives, more than just gadgets and gizmos oftentimes. And, uh, and while those are things that we talk about a lot, this is where technology can make a big difference. Visit AppliedBiosystems.com for more info, and we'll link you there when you visit IntoTomorrow.com.